Okay, and we're uh, recording. So, welcome to this session on how to prepare a submission for the upcoming OER, Open Education Conference, which takes place in Cork City, Ireland, in March 2024. We're your co-chairs. I'm Gerald O'Sullivan. And I'm Tom Farrelly. I'm the head of the Department of Technology Enhanced Learning in the Munster Technological University. I've been working at the crossover of learning and technology for longer than I'd care to admit, but um, I can reveal that my, my earlier efforts in the area would have been based on CD-ROM, if anyone knows what that is. And uh, this kind of live online uh, conferencing that we're doing right now would have involved large room-based conferencing systems. So draw your own conclusions there. Uh, anyway, I and the department I head up have been involved in a lot of EdTech projects and initiatives over a long period of time. And in one way or another, a lot of that work has involved or linked back to our commitment to open education and the OER movement. On my part, I have been an academic developer and lecturer for way over 20 years. I researched, published and presented on the subject of open for several years and have a strong commitment to openness in all its forms. Aside from being an academic, though, you may also know me better as the Gasta Master, the instigator of the high energy micro presentation format. And that high energy format is one of a number of different formats that you can submit uh, under for the conference. So together, Tom and I are your conference co-chairs. The conference takes place in the Munster Technological University. Our university is based in the southwest of Ireland, crossing the counties of Cork and Kerry. I'm based in Cork. And I'm based in Kerry. And not surprisingly, crossing two counties, MTU is a multi-site university. We have six campuses and the conference will take place in our Bishopstown campus in Cork City. As your co-chairs and on behalf of the organising committee as well, we, we are really looking forward to welcoming you to Cork City and extending to you uh, a Caed Mila Falta, which is Irish for 100,000 welcomes. We're really thrilled to be able to bring together educators, researchers, policymakers and innovators from around the globe to celebrate the power of open education in all its forms. We're eager to share our campus with you and keen for you to experience the beautiful and vibrant county and city of Cork known to locals, well, so many anyway, as the true capital of Ireland. However, as a Dublin man, that's going to be a, a, some sort of debate, a debate that I hope we'll have when you come over to Cork. Looking forward to that debate already, Tom. But look, at the OER conference is just a great opportunity to, to talk and share and learn and collaborate in a fun and supportive environment. If you've been to an OER conference before, you will know what we mean. If you haven't, well, what are you waiting for? See you in Cork in March. Now, over to yourselves, uh, Donna and Laurie, to tell us more about the themes and the submission formats for the conference. Well, hi there. Uh, hi, I'm Laurie Phipps. <laughs> I'm Donna Longclow. <laughs> and we've just started recording. Yeah, we're going to talk to you today about OER. Where are the slides? So um this is our uh catchy and funny subtitle here presentation uh i am as i said donna lonclo and uh, myself and laurie phipps are both senior research fellows uh with tell at munster technological university which is where oer 24 is going to be held and speaking of oer 24 the deadline for oer 24 is sunday the 12th of november 2023 um and you'll see there there's also a hashtag um i don't actually do twitter anymore but uh we are capturing the hashtags on things like linkedin and blue sky and there is an oer24 channel if you want to find the oer24 channel on blue sky then drop me a line i think we'll also be trying to have some presence on mastodon so stay tuned for that so the themes are all available for you at the website, and we've got that uh, here on the slide. Um, and we're not going to go over them in great detail, but we wanted to just highlight them for you for the purposes of this uh, introductory video. So the first theme is open education, landscape and transformation. The second is equity and inclusion in OER. The third is open source and scholarly engagement. The fourth is the ethical dimensions of generative AI and OER creation. 
and I'm hoping that on the video when we do this, we'll dub out Donna doing the eye roll for generative AI. Um, there's also innovative pedagogies and creative education. And there is a sixth and final theme as well, which is the wild card, which is for all you kids out there who couldn't actually think I want to present something under those first five themes. Um, not sure that we really need a wild card, though, given the breadth and depth of those other themes. So hopefully we won't get too many submissions under a wild card. So the purpose of our little video here is to try to give those of you who have never uh, presented at OER before, or who have perhaps submitted um, unsuccessfully, some sense of what we on the committee are looking for, and to try to give you some, some guidance around that. And just the first thing we would want to say is that we're defining for the purposes of this education very broadly. Sorry, the phone is ringing. <laughs> we're including formal and informal learning settings in schools, colleges, and universities, the workplace, homes and communities um, at any stage in learners' lives. So um, please don't consider yourself to be out of it if you're not in higher education. And the kinds of presentations that we're looking for are workshop research paper, presentation, and GASTA, and they are all on campus. We want you to come on out and visit us in Cork and have a great time. So you'll find them all on campus, and that's them there. Uh, we're just going to go through a few of the uh, basic tips. So clarity, succinctness, we want you to actually make sure that you actually get everything that you want on a paper. Um, demonstrate that you actually understand what you're talking about. That's always a good start, right? Um, and also, we'd like to see some sort of statement around diversity and inclusion, some consideration of it in as many papers as we can. It is a theme, but these are the sorts of things that just should just run throughout the whole of OER and our whole practice. Um, the community reflection is about looking at the OER community, thinking about the things that are going on in this big community across education. So, so think about how we can hold a, a mirror up to ourselves in that. And also, is there a new perspective or a new practice that we should be looking at? So we'll just go over one by one the, the genres. And you will have seen in the previous slide the uh, word count for the submission uh, that we're, we're asking for. So, so for a workshop, we want to emphasize the fact that the people attending the workshop should be talking more than you are. So this is as much advice about when you deliver the workshop as it is about when you submit for the workshop. But when you're designing your workshop proposal, keep it in mind that it should be active and interactive. If you have a lot to say, if you have a, a, just a lot of content that you want to deliver, consider a different genre of presentation. The whole point of the workshop is that while you are facilitating, you the facilitator are not actually the point of whatever is going on in the workshop presentation. And speaking of those different genres, um, there is a research paper slot for you to apply to. It's exactly what it says on the tin. You'll have 25 minutes, but what you should consider is talking more about the why of the research and the impact that you can have in a presentation. The expectation is that you'll share your methods and rationale and analysis. But to be honest, the audience is going to really be interested in what you think the impact of what you're doing is. So the audience will also be able to ask questions. Yeah, so allow that in your presentation. Give them something to think about. Give them something to ask. Um, don't just leave it and say, well, maybe they'll ask me if I got ethics approval. Think about all the things that they might ask you. So the presentation genre is shorter. I believe we're allocating 15 minutes for presentations as opposed to 25. And this is where we expect the more practice-centered presentations to show up. This is where uh, perhaps you have engaged in some sort of initiative across your campus, um, or you participated in the uh, production of an OER artifact. Um, but even with this genre, we want to make sure that you give time for rationale and analysis. So these are gonna be the more what and how heavy parts of, of the OER conference, but we still want to have people um, engaging in critical reflection um, and uh, maybe even asking of themselves, so what? So now you have done this thing, 
um, that you have talked to us about. What are the implications of it more broadly than just the, the practice that you are describing for the conference goers? Finally, he's back from his extensive tour around North America. The Gaster Master will be in the house. Um, you've got five minutes to make an impact in the Gaster. Make every single second count. Say one thing. Keep it short and focused and say one thing really well. If you want to do a shout out, if you want to get somebody um, to engage with your work through this, if you want feedback, then you've got to ask in the Gaster, get out there and say, I want you to tell me about this. And if you want partners, it's the, exactly the same. Make it easy for people to engage with you. Less is more. No text. See if you can do this without any text on the slide. Focus on the visuals. Focus on getting people engaged. And at the last slide, don't forget the who, me. Yeah, leave your contact information up there so that if people are really inspired by what you've done in five minutes, that they can get in touch with you. And again, this is advice that is not just about the submission of it for uh, the, the conference, but the uh, execution of the GASTA. So I would recommend that you approach it as an extemporaneous thing. Maybe only give it from notes. You don't have to have it super precisely scripted. One of the things that I witness with the GASTA lightning talks over and over again is people trying to do a 15 minute presentation in Agasta. And that's not what the Gastas are for. They're for short, sharp, sometimes provocative discussions of one important thing that you want to try to get across in a really engaging way. So think of Gasta as an opportunity to experiment with how you present. If you are used to doing what kind of presentations about very practical things, maybe think about the one thing that you really want to rant about for five minutes. Uh, give yourself only five slides to do it in, one minute per slide, maybe even fewer slides. So think of it as a way to challenge yourself um, as a thinker and a practitioner and, a, and as a presenter and have it be something uh, really different than, than what you might ordinarily do at a conference. And yes, Tom Farrelly is going to be the one in charge of the timing. And so be prepared for him to shout at you if you go over time. Remember, be different. Poetry slam, sing it. You can even do it through, um, I don't know, interpretive dance if you really want to. This is your time to get on the stage, have some fun with it. Yep. Okay. So what are the criteria that we're looking at, Donna? So this is from uh, the Easy Chair uh, webpage. So we've got URLs throughout this slide deck that are pointing you either to uh, the alt website, which is the announcement for the call for papers, or when you click through to the Easy Chair uh, environment so that you could submit. This is what is one of the things that's going to come up. These are the review criteria for all of the genres. And I want to highlight the one at the top in particular, relevance to one or more of the conference themes. The conference co-chairs have thought very carefully about the theming of this conference. And uh, we would like for people to pay attention to that theming as well. Um, you should also consider the extent to which the work that you want to present is useful globally and across various sectors. So while you might have done something quite locally, it's going to have implications beyond your locality. Um, contributing to the provision of reliable evidence for the scholarship and research around open education. So those of you who have research projects that you want to present on, you're contributing to a knowledge base around open education open education practices, open education resources. And so we will be evaluating uh, the, the submissions based on, on that. We want some demonstrated evidence that you have reflected and evaluated and engaged your critical thinking. Um, so again, we're, we're less interested in just straight up, this is a thing I did, and much more interested in, this is a thing I did, and this is what I think it means. We would like for you to engage all of the participants uh, as best you can in, in your, so it's not just about you getting up and delivering content, but you giving time for people to ask you questions, um, you generating a workshop proposal that is going to be about people engaging with each other um, and with the ideas in your workshop. Uh, we value creativity and innovation. So if it's, if it's something that you've never seen done before and you would like to, 
to have it be done, uh, please submit that to OER24. Openness, obviously, uh, is, is the baseline theme of, of this conference. And so, yes, to what extent um, are you forging new ground in thinking about and talking about openness and education. And, and obviously we would like uh, it to be clear and we would like for you to have a coherent argument um, and we would like evidence that you have paid attention to the guidelines uh, that the co-chairs have put together for this conference. Next slide. Okay, so this should be uh, obvious, but again, it's reiterating what I was saying about the research paper. We want less reportage and more analysis. We want to talk about what you did and how, but more than that, tell us why. Tell us about why you did the work and why it's important and what the impact is. What are your motivations? What problems did you identify? What emerged in the processes? What did you learn? But what did it mean to other people? What impact did you have on education? For as diverse a set of practitioners as we have across uh, the community that attends OER, I think it's really important for you to define what you mean by open. And maybe you won't be doing this specifically in your submission, but in your presentation, I think it's really important that you talk about your specific approach to open for the purposes of your presentation. Uh, OER and OEP landscape is widely varied in terms of geography um, and in terms of institutions. And so I don't think it's useful to try to get the sort of encompassing and homogenizing definition of open. I think that being specific about what you mean for your purposes, for your institution, for your specific location is gonna be an important part of engaging with the community. I think that if the more specific we are about what each of us means by open, the more possibilities there are for connecting across those varying definitions. We look forward to meeting you in Cork. Ta you Roif, you are all welcome. And uh, please submit your proposal. This is the URL and thank you for your time and attention. This is going to be posted on the OER uh, submissions page, I believe, or somewhere on the alt website, we're going to try to post this video in a variety of different social media locations. So if you have questions that we have not answered, please put them in the comments, and we or some other committee members will pay attention and get you that information that you need. Thank you so much. I've been Laurie Phipps, and that's Donna Lonkla. Have a lovely day. Bye.